What's going on YouTube? This is a drawing supply video. Uh, I know in the last video I said I was going to start doing tutorials next. Um, don't worry, I'm going to get to those. It's just that right now I realize I should do three videos before I start doing the tutorials. Uh, this one, which is basically, of course, a supply video. And the next video will be about sharpening the pencils correctly. And after that, I would do how to hold a pencil. Um, yeah, I just want to get those out of the way first before I go right into showing, showing you guys how to draw and basically starting a tutorial uh, journey. Yeah, so again, this is a drawing supply video. And um, right now, we just go ahead and get started showing you books and pencils and all that stuff. Right here, we have a Canson... Biggie newsprint. Um, this is a very large uh, pad. Uh, it's uh, 18 by 24, and it's it's heavy too. It's 30 pounds, 45 grams. Um, 100 sheets are inside. Uh, I mainly use this for warming up. All right, so I don't do anything final or finish or detail in this. I don't really believe this type of pad is for that because look at the, the papers are really thin, they're easily to tear. It's not archival. As you can see here over the years, as a matter of fact, I had this pad for a long time. I had this since 2007. And originally this is how the sheets looked. This was the color. And you can see at the edges, it started to change you know, because I had it for so long and the heat and all that stuff just get to it and start to change color. So it's not good to do final artwork in this. It would not last. Um, but I figured, you know, it's here, it's empty. It's, it's best for loose drawings and getting warmed up before you start doing a detailed sketch or a detailed drawing. So you see a lot of lines in here, like you can see right here. Uh, also some circles. Guys, it's good to do a lot of circles every day. I'll get into that later, as a matter of fact. But yeah, that's pretty much what this pad consists of. There's a few loose sketches in here, as you can see. Um, these ideas I had back in the day. Uh, yeah, but... That's what this book is mostly for. It's a lot of loose sketches and just warm up exercises. So yeah, if you want, you can get this one. You know, you can add this to your arsenal of uh, supplies. Uh, I keep it mainly for warming up. And if you don't have this, it's fine. You can use a regular computer paper to warm up with. You know, just do a lot of scribbles and stuff. Here. Get your, your arm muscles going. Get your arm muscles, you know, used to moving. Um, next, I have uh, sketch pads that I use. Uh, I got this one that's very small. Uh, it's a three and a half inches uh, by five inches. Um, very light. Could, Probably put this in your pocket and just put it out on the bus. Yeah, it's very light. You could put it, it could hold it in your pocket, pull it out on the bus, or you know, wherever you want to go. You just pull it out and just you know sketch out something. And that's as far as I got with this. Yeah. But I just saw it in the store and I just figured, you know what? I want to have that. Just in case I'm somewhere at a cookout or whatever and there's just not anything going on. I'm just bored and I just take it out and just pull out this little roach and just start sketching. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. Then you have another sketch pad that's bigger than this one uh it's uh, five and a half inches by eight and a half inches um 
They're both the same brand as Strathmore. Those are good brands. Yeah, this also can be used while you're out and about. Obviously, it won't fit in your pocket like this one, but uh, yeah, you could take this on the go as well. Um, so yeah, I haven't really done anything in this one at all. Hopefully in the future I could get to it. And I don't know, show it in a sketchbook tour video. But those are the small ones. Here we have this big one from Canson. Uh, this one was actually finished, but this is not a sketchbook tour video, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just showing the books and uh, the quality of the books and that's it. These type of sketch pads I, I use mainly for, um, you know, just sketching. This one in particular was for like, uh, basically when I started to, you know, re retrain myself how to draw again. I use it for sketching mainly because the papers, they're really thin, you can see through. So I don't, I don't really want to do anything final and detail in this type of sketch pad. So, yeah, that's that. For finished artwork, the best type of pad to use is probably a Strathmore Bristol. The texture in here is smooth. Not only that, but the paper is a lot stronger. And it's difficult to really rip this. So this would be perfect to do a finished drawing, no matter the medium, whether it's graphite, pen, color, it doesn't matter. This is a 14 inch by 17 inch. So it's much larger than the others that I just showed. And uh, the only thing that makes me a little nervous of this pad is this right here. Once you start to bend the paper, you know, all the papers you get through the end, it's, it will start to rip. It start to get loose, but it's probably not meant to be used like a sketch pad. So after each drawing, you probably, you know, it's best to probably just go ahead and frame it somewhere. So, but other than that, the quality of the paper is, is, is top notch. So this is something I recommend for a finished piece. With my YouTube Tom Last videos, I started out with uh, a mixed media. Um, so I drew the Zulu and the Egyptian warrior. Um, mainly because the paper here is very thick, almost like the Bristol. But the problem where I stopped drawing in this because the texture of the paper was really rough. It wasn't smooth like the Bristol or this next uh, pad that I'm about to show you, you guys. Um, so yeah, I stopped drawing because of that, because you know it was the texture was really rough. So when I when I draw across, you can see, or I sketch across it, or shade across it, you see like the little areas that's not being filled. So I didn't want to continue with this pad. So I've been drawing. All the, the other time-lapse videos I've been drawing with this one. Uh, this is a... Uh, what was the other one? The other one was a Canson Mixed Media. It's, it's not bad, so you can still use it if you want to. I like the fact that it's micro-perforated. Yeah, you can frame the drawings if you want. Personally, I use it as a sketch pad. You know what I'm saying? And it's mixed media, so it's strong enough to, you know, use watercolor, uh, ink, and even, and of course, color pencils. Um, but for the style that I'm going for and the type of drawings, the way I want my drawings to look, it's not really suitable for me. So this drawing pad is actually something that I find useful. Um, it's also a mixed media, as you can see. It's from Grum Grumbatcher. Uh, it's 11 by 14. It's a lot bigger than the other one, but not as big as the Bristol. But it's just right. Um, so yeah, the texture in this is smooth. And the paper is almost as hard as the Bristol. Not as hard, but 
is close to it. So, you know, this I find very archival, you know what I mean? So yes, yeah, so all the drawings from the Tom Last videos, they're actually in this drawing pad right here. Besides the cans and mixed media, yeah, the rest of them are in here. So this is a good uh, sketch pad to get. Uh, it's a grum batcher again, mixed media. Um, if you want to do like some finish work, the only problem with this, actually no, it's not a problem. This is actually uh, perforated as well. So you can actually frame these um, when, you're, when you're done. So now that we got the sketch pad, drawing pads and all of that out the way, um, going to some other things. I also use uh, printing paper. I use these to prevent smudging because working with graphite, things could easily get messy. I also use the printing paper for rough sketches. And these are just a few examples. This is, this is for the Samurai time-lapse video. And this was for Siegfried from Soul Calibur for the video game drawing series. Um, that is, is still going on, by the way. But um, yeah, so that's why I use printing papers. Next, I'll go into some pencils. Uh, this is a this is almost finished. It's the Steeler H pencil. Um, there's actually more pencils right here. These are some brand new Steelers I just bought. Uh, and all my time last videos are in the description. I hope you guys read the description, man. I put a lot of time into that. <laughs> anyway, um, I share in the description the pencil that's been used in the drawing. So I mainly use the Steeler pencil and Pencils range from uh, 9H all the way to uh, 9B. And 9B is the, the tone is very dark, and then 9H is extremely light. Me personally, I like to use, uh, you know, I go, the hardest I go is, is the H, as you can see right here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so I start with an H pencil, and I go all the way up to a 6B. So, what you see right here is H, F, B, uh, 3B, and 6B. These are the actual uh, grades of pencil that I use in, in all my time last videos. Also, to aid with my drawings, uh, I use these. These are known as stumps. Uh, these two big ones here I use for like, you know, a bigger area. You can use the side. And they basically smooth out the, the marks that you made with the pencil. Just like that. They help give that, you know, that uh, smooth transition of the tones. Um, Some people use them both for sketching and drawings, but I mostly use them for drawings. If I have to smooth out any tone in the sketch, I'll just use my finger. You could also use your finger in the drawing as well. But um, these small ones are obviously for like little tight areas that need to be a lot smoother than they actually are. So, and they're great for not making a whole mess because these big ones, you know, when you, when you smudge it, you know, you could kind of go, you know, you kind of get it past lines and areas that you don't want it to get. So that's why, you know, it's good to use these small ones. Uh, that's that. When it comes to erasing, um, I have this eraser. This is a Utrecht, Utrecht uh, eraser. I don't re recommend these type of rubber erasers because I don't know. And I especially 
and especially this pencil, the pencil erases. Um, I mean, if that's all you have, I mean, it is what it is, but they tend to leave that pinkish mark. And you see, you see that? It makes it, it kind of ruins the drawing. So you might want to be careful if you actually have this type of, um, if you're actually using this. You know, it'd be good to get some type of eraser, you know, something like this. But even this is not my first uh, option. But the steel erasers aren't bad. As you can see, it kind of. Kind of really erase stuff, but even then the marks are still there. So I recommend this right here. This is my official eraser that I use, which is this is a um, a netted eraser, and it's just a rubber, and you could just. Uh, but that's kind of ruined right there because of the pencil eraser. So there's no way that's coming out. But as far as this right here, now it's not gonna get it out completely because that's a 6B, you know? But for the H pencil, of course, it's almost as if it was never there. That's why I like this, um, this eraser over all these other erasers. So I use, I mainly use the netted eraser and wherever the, the netted, the netted eraser, the netted eraser, you could actually shape it into um, different, uh, you could make it however, whatever shape you want. You can make the head pointy so you can get into a small area. The only problem with that is that it's not really hard on that surface. So if there's a small area that I need to erase and I don't want to make a mess in the surrounding area, then I'll use this right here. This is a paper made uh, eraser stick. So there's actually, it's shaped like a pencil, but inside it is actually an eraser. And it, you can push it out like that. Sometimes I use like a blade and just sharpen the end and it could get into small areas. I wouldn't recommend doing this, especially when you have a lot of work done around. So maybe you're erasing a small area and if it's small debris left over, left on the paper, then just use this and just take it up. So these are the two main erasers that I use. Um, the other erasers, you know, except for the pencil eraser, those aren't bad either, but they're not as effective as these two to me. So what I use is these. And finally, other supplies that I use are a ruler, a ruler right here, um, sharpener, of course, um, a blade, and sandpaper. I use rulers in all my time lapse videos. Of course, you know, you're gonna always have to, you know, keep the pencils sharpened. Um, but I don't just use a regular sharpener. In the beginning, that's what I started to do. But as I went on, over time, I started to not only sharpen the pencil, but I use a razor to expose more of the lead and then finally get the sandpaper to smoothen the lead out. So basically what that means is I will go from this to this. See what I'm saying? So of course something like this you'll get a lot more out of. You get more on the side. 
So it's not just a point, but even on the side. The graphite pencils, be careful not to go too low with the way you hold the pencils, because sometimes the painting of the pencils will actually rub onto the paper. So you see it happened right there a while ago. So yeah, man, so that concludes all my drawing supplies. Um, most of these supplies you can find at your local art store. If you don't have any art stores in your area, you can find these supplies online. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link into the description box. Like I said, some supplies you could get from the local art store. Others, like the razor, you could get at um, the local hardware store like Home Depot or whatever hardware store is in your uh, area. So yeah, man. That's my art supply video. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and um, stay tuned for the next video. All right? Peace.